Welcome back for more NC Sports Weekly News with the latest from top water sports circuits from around the globe. Fair winds at Florence Sarto, tragedy strikes in Argentina as France loses three champions and women's assailing one of its first offshore pioneers. Team Brazil dominates Biscayne Bay and Lars Grau does it again on the stars at Miami Sailing Week 2015. Belamente finally takes the win. Half off a 72 foot maxi clinches the seventh edition of the ROC 600 in the Caribbean. Front row seat in Lorient for the baptism of the new Safran Imoca 60. Senior correspondent to Sebastien Destremont with the story. The 2015 Aquabike World Championship season is off the blocks amid surprises and upsets at the Qatar GP. And guess what? Winter is for sailing at the Snow and Ice Sailing 2015 World Championships in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. NC Sports plunge into the action. Immense sadness that gripped the international sports world on Monday as breaking news of a mid-air collision between two TV production helicopters shooting a reality series on location in Argentina quickly spread through the wires. With no survivors among the 10 passengers, chilling details soon emerged, confirming that three French athletes were also on board. Olympic swimming champion Camille Mufa, 25 years old. Boxer Alexis Bastine, 28 and pioneer solo sailor Florence Artaud, 57. Daughter of famous French publisher Jacques Artaud, she was among the very first women in the world to take up professional offshore solo sailing back in 1978. That year, after her 11th place at the Route du Rhum, the French public nicknamed her the Little Fiancée of the Atlantic. The historic record-breaking Atlantic crossing in 1990 on trimaran Pierre Premier remains one of Florence's greatest achievements as she crushed Loïc Perron's previous mark by two days. A legend among legends, hers was a tumultuous career that would last until 2007. Plagued by tough personal challenges, as she disclosed in her 2009 autobiography, A Wind of Freedom. Arto will always be remembered as a pioneer in women's sailing, as well as in the struggle for equal opportunity. Fair winds, Florence. Placing a four crews on the top six positions of the overall leaderboard, Team Brazil dominated the star class at this year's Bacari Miami Sailing Week. Thanks to two regattas won, adding to a slim two-point gap in the six races held, Lars Grau and Bauman Samuel Gonçalves defeated arch-rivals Jorge Joao Zarif and Bruno Prada to win this 88-year-old sailing classic for the second time in a row. The USA's Quantum with Mark Reynolds on helm completed the podium in third. Other green and gold finishers included Pascolato and Boning in fourth and brother Torben Grau with Almeida in sixth place. Very good feeling. Uh, it was an excellent week, uh, high level competition, 57 boats and we had a very good uh, Brazilian fleet. The star class uh, I think is, is the most important class in Brazil ever. So we love uh, sailing stars, so the good star sailors in Brazil, uh, we have a big passion to be uh, wasting our energy, time and money, uh, spending the best as we can on the star class. About 50 mostly American crews were also on call in Biscayne Bay for the J70 class. And again, the Brazilians left their mark, with Mexico and Italy on the chase. The Bruschetta crew, led by Mauricio Santa Cruz, barely pulled away from Flojito y Cooperando with Julian Fernandez and Carlo Alberini's Calvin Network. Taylor Canfield on his US-1 crew topped the All-American podium for the M32 catamarans, ahead of Michael Dominguez and Ronald Hanley's 
skippers of Team Bronco and Escape Velocity. Team Jack brought to live up to its name as Brad Boston's Canadians narrowly took the Viper 640 class against Ghost Panda and Terminally Pretty of the USA. The X1 and Flash Rider closed with a tight game in Miami, with John Potter taking the title on the most wins, and with Morris and Hallowell completing the VX1 class podium. It's a series of sprints, and like most sprinters, you know, every race is different. Can you get out of the blocks the way you want to get out of the blocks? Uh, as soon as you get cracked off, can you get up to top speed and, and not give up a lot of race course? Um, you know, at, we tried to make a couple of minutes at every corner as a, from a tactical standpoint. You know, 12 corners, three minutes a corner, that's real time. <laughs> Sail, the crew did a phenomenal job in changing sail. Great afterguard. I couldn't be, I didn't do shit. <laughs> oh, I mean, sure those guys did. not only can think, they can steer yeah. and they're fun. With Mike Sanderson on helm, aided by Terry Hutchinson and Adrian Stead on tactics, Hatfoth's JV72 Maxi Bellamente finally got the overall win at the 2015 ROC Caribbean 600, following two years as runners up. 66 yachts have started this 7th edition of the regatta as hundreds of spectators looked on from Port Charlotte and Shirley Heights in Antigua. The 600 nautical mile course have crisscrossed around 11 pristine Caribbean islands where multi-hulls, maxis, super maxis and a host of highly competitive yachts battled it out for both the overall and individual class podiums. Perfect racing and record-breaking conditions were on hand as wind speeds hit the 20-knot mark. Lloyd Thornburg's Mod 70 Fado 3 with Michel Desjoyeaux and Brian Thompson on board closed their race in one day, 9 hours and 35 minutes, crushing the previous mark by 6 and a half hours. Among the top Mount Hall favorites, George David's Maxi Rambler 88 was first back into port to grab real timeline honors and third overall after one day and 19 hours. <music> Bellamente's feat gained a further significance as for most of the race, the American crew tangled with some serious contenders in Mike Slade's Bar 100 Leopard and the Italian crew of a VOR-70 Maserati, captained by offshore sailing legend Giovanni Soldini. Yet the Azzurri just uh, couldn't shake off the Americans and were unfortunately forced to retire three-quarters through the race after hydraulic problems on their canting keel system. Just two days after being launched, the new Imoca 60 Saturn is being christened in Lorient, Brittany. It is also the opportunity for former skipper Marc Guillemot to officially introduce the new and young skipper, Morgan Lagraviere. A new project with a new boat and a new skipper and a little twinge of sadness. It is almost as if I had the keys of the boat and hand them over to Morgan and say, here you go, son, it's your turn to play. The son, the public, Joy and emotion all gathered on Saturday for the christening of Saffron, the firstborn of the latest generation of Monaco built for the next Vendée Globe. With applause from the audience, the godmother of the boat wrecked the traditional bottle of champagne over the bow of the new boat. In Morgan La Graviere, Saffron has chosen youth but also talent. That of a seasoned athlete with the heart of a competitor. Morgan will have all he needs uh, to proudly fly the colors of the group. After months of design and construction, the christening of these boats, especially designed for him, is a turning point in his career. Morgan is very emotional and his face is covered in tears when delivering his official speech. The intensity of the moment uh, has caught me by surprise. I'm really happy to be joined by everyone who played a part in the design of this beautiful boat. I am touched and proud to be here now, surrounded by people of this quality, of this stature. 
You are all great professionals in each of your areas. Thank you. The ceremony ends with the release of balloons in the colors of the boat, turquoise and lime green, on a hot and sunny day. It is now time to focus on the sailing part. Soon, Saffron will set sail for the Canary Islands for an intense training session of about a month. Revving up the engines for a brand new season, the UIM Aquabike World Championship kicked off its 2015 tour over the weekend with a Qatar Grand Prix and with surprising upsets in the making. In the runabout category, Middle East pilots clashed with a powerful and reigning French squad, adding to mixed results on the scoreboard. In final results, a local star Thamer Al Darwish nailed the title with a fifth in Heat 1 and then a crucial first place in Heat 2. Twenty fourteen runner up Jeremy Perez closed in second, with French compatriot Jean Baptiste Botti in third. The now famous Croatian sibling rivalry in freestyle may be reaching new heights this year as Nak Florjancic eternally second, this time a put world champion and older brother Rock to the ropes, with a decisive win in Heat 2 to grab the first 2015 title. Qatari athletes continued to deliver with Fahad Alhamli taking third. Spain's Nacho Armilla San Francis Jeremy Porre locked horns on the Ski GP1, trading heat victories for a tied final result. Both of them had to share the top spot on the podium, with another Frenchman, Alex Barret, taking third. Mixed scores also defined the ladies' Ski GP1 category after dominating Heat 1 defending world champ Jennifer Menard of France retired from Heat 2 with engine trouble, paving the way for Sandra Fernandez Hernandez and a victory for Spain ahead of Estelle Poré, also from France, and Emma Nelly Ortendal from Sweden. Fonda du Lac on the southernmost tip of Lake Winnebago hosted the 2015 World Ice and Snow Sailing Championships, and 40 athletes from over 10 different countries flocked to Wisconsin for this unique winter event in their bid to grab the course racing, short track slalom, and speed titles. Craig Molitor, president of the Area Convention and Visitors Bureau, explains why Fond du Lac is the perfect setting for these 35th World Championships open to men and women, from the junior categories all the way to the masters. Uh, we are positioned right at the base of what's called the Niagara Escarpment. Now what that means is that we have a large geological formation here leading up to the lake in our community and uh, the end result is a lot of wind comes whipping down off the hills onto the lake all the time. It's a very, very windy destination. Popular in Northern Europe as well as Canada and the USA, this extraordinary race included several disciplines. And here, with 30 to 35 knots blowing, the competition was full on. Among the top results, Igor Renkasa from the Ukraine went unrivaled on the sleds. While Sweden filled the podium in handheld skiing with James, Larsen and Lars. The USA's Jason Yetli grabbed the kiteboard title, while Russia's Andrei Balyakin dominated the largest fleet of kite skiers ahead of Canadians McGuire and Levesque. Join the current of water sports fans for all the action from Miami Sailing Week. It's all coming straight from Biscayne Bay with unfiltered interviews and full highlights in the next edition of the NC Sports Buzz, premiering this Saturday at 5 p.m. only on Nautical Channel. Plunge into the action with NC Sports.